Hello, hello, chick chick. What is up, you sexy beasts? I'm here at the track with Mr. James Newbury, and we just saw Georgia Pryor doing 24 crisscross double unders. She's got this. Keep going. Stay with it. Oh, 24. We just finished the track session, so the hammies are tight, the calves are tight. Excuses are already starting. <laughs> uh, but apparently, Mr. James here has never actually tried crisscross double unders, and I reckon they might come up at Torian Pro. So he's going to try them now, and then I'm going to try and beat George's 24. Um, I've done this before, but the last time I tried, if you remember, I pulled my calf muscle. Hopefully, it goes better today. Okay, James, let's see what you got, bro. I'm trying to wrap my head around actually how the Momentum works here. Like, I actually can't comprehend it, but. Okay, so, so under once, crisscross in the same jump. Correct. Let me lock this down. Four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Ooh, sixteen. Georgia, he's coming for you. Sixteen. Have a break. Give me a go. Six, seven, ah! Two, three, four, five, six. Feeling good. Feeling good? It's gonna happen. My pecs are on fire. So good. He's feeling good. He just needs to maintain composure. Here he goes for the record. Going down, Georgia. Going down. 25 coming at you. You ready? <laughs> oh, 15! 15! Oh, yeah. 15! You had it! Dang it, it felt good. I'm not leaving. Thirty three, baby, I think. The whole way through that. Oh, I can't say that, can I? I can't say. 33! Woo! In life. What do I do now? Do I just beat Georgia's score or do I have to try and beat 33 now, I guess? Far out. I don't care about this dick score. I just want to beat Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Vakes, I believe in you. <laughs> ah! I'm gonna pull a calf muscle. Yeah, leave it. I can feel leave it. <laughs> we need you for later. You're safe for now, Georgia. You're safe for now. I know what you're thinking. Something's looking different, right? The man's looking younger. Something's different. Shave the beard, nice and short, baby face. At least 10 years off, you know? At least. Hey, if you follow podcasts like Joe Rogan or Dr. Andrew Uberman, you've probably heard about the benefits of sprinting in some of the latest podcasts. The other cardio day sprint is real easy. Find a patch of land, Sprint for 30 seconds to 45 seconds, then walk back for a minute to 90 seconds. Sprint again, do that five to 10 times. Till, by, by the end, you will have increased your speed, your VO2 max, your output. There's a lot of talk at the moment about sprinting and how the average person can benefit from incorporating it just once a week. I saw this amazing clip from Peter Artia on the Rogan podcast. He's a Canadian American physician and I wanted to play it for you because it's, uh, it's pretty stunning uh, statistics or insights, so watch this. Having very high cardiorespiratory fitness, so having a VO2 max that is elite, we would define that as the top 2.5% of the population compared to below average, is a five-fold reduction in all-cause mortality. Wow. Death from any kind. Whoa. 
I mean, there, we, there, we don't have drugs that have a 5x reduction in mortality. That's incredible. And that's just elite cardiovascular health. Right. And then when you layer in strength and muscle mass, um, we actually now have pretty good data as to the fact that strength is more important than muscle mass. Isn't that unreal? So it mentions three things, VO2 max, muscle mass, and strength. And sprinting improves all three of those. So let's talk about four of the main benefits you get from sprinting. The first one is an elevated metabolism post-exercise. It's called EPOC. It's post-exercise oxygen consumption. How long does your metabolism stay elevated after training? When you do low intensity aerobic training, your metabolism and your heart rate pretty much returns back to normal straight after exercise. Whereas with high intensity training like sprinting, both your metabolism, your heart rate, and your oxygen consumption will stay elevated long after you finish, just sucking up the calories without you doing any more work. So it's a really good way to get good bang for your buck by doing high intensity training. Now, I say sprinting, this can be anything from airdyne to rowing to maybe even some skipping, just really high intensity interval style training. The next one is protein synthesis is elevated extremely high after sprint training. Now, protein synthesis is essentially the natural process by which your muscles uh, produce protein to repair itself. And so that's always gonna be a good thing to elevate that and to increase protein synthesis. So really important that your nutrition is on point for this to be maximized. But essentially after strength training or sprinting, there's a period of time where your muscles are extremely receptive to protein. And that's going to be a great time to take your protein if you're taking a protein shake or, you know, eating a high protein meal. But protein synthesis is extremely high after a sprint session. Number three, it increases human growth hormone, which has a massive role to play in weight loss, but also in the growth of tissue. So it helps with the aging process it slows down the aging process so not only will you have an increased metabolism you will also be slowing down your aging you'll be looking like me you know just young and number four it potentiates big word i know potentiates the central nervous system which essentially means it primes it or gets it ready for larger force output so it's actually a great thing to do prior to strength training if you're about to do a strength session and you do some sprints prior to that you're basically priming your central nervous system for larger force output so if you have the space and the time prior to strength training, it can be really beneficial to do some sprinting first to prime your central nervous system and get a lot more out of that strength session than you would have. So I wanted to make this video to encourage you to incorporate some form of sprint training uh, in your weekly training schedule. And it doesn't have to be at a track like we did. It can just be out in the field. It doesn't have to be running. It can be assault bike intervals or sprints. It just has to be really high output, um, you know, 10 to 90 seconds worth of all out efforts um, followed by a nice long rest and repeating that. So today we did 120 meter sprints and we just walked it back slowly and repeated that eight times and I was fried afterwards, it was beautiful. So if you've ever wondered why do sprinters have such amazing bodies, you know, not only strong, great looking legs, but also abs and big shoulders and traps, these are the reasons. Sprinting is amazing. Okay, so it's been a couple of days since we had the track session and the crisscross double unders. So I'm gonna go get my rope now and attempt those crisscross double unders again because I reckon I reckon I might have close to 50 in me so let's see nah my calves and Achilles are not happy I'm gonna stick to sprinting let me know down in the comments do you sprint or do like really high intensity interval training and uh, if not join me you know let's just get swole together <laughs> I get my tribe, have a fantastic weekend, much love. Mwah.